All right, folks, I'm going to show you a round of Street Fighter 4 gameplay, and I want you to tell me, do you think that this Ryu player right here is a good player, a bad player, or maybe somewhere in between, okay? Be honest and let me know down in the comments, all right? Let's go. All right, the DP into DP. Let's go overhead. Whiff sweep, DP. Overhead. Another overhead. A third overhead gets punished, but wake up, DP. Wake up, DP into DP. Jump over. Counter hit, throw wisp, but it's fine. We got another DP, air to air. <laughs> All right, let's not get to the next scene just yet. Just let me know based on that. Based on what we just saw, do you think he's a good player, a bad player, or maybe a little bit of both, okay? So the video here that we're watching, this is the best of Geobin. This was uploaded back in the day by Liang Hu BBB, one of the OG goats of uploading highlights and stuff like that for Street Fighter 4. And uh, Geoban was a player that we were all very fascinated with back in the day because his gameplay is so erratic, it's so unusual. And honestly, it was really hard for me to figure out when I was watching this back at the time it came out. Is Geoban actually good? But I I've come around now. I do think that Geoban actually is a very good player. But he does play with a very unconventional play style. He definitely plays from the heart. Okay, but I think if we watch closely, we'll find that he's actually making some really good decisions throughout these clips. So I'm going to be analyzing this video and we're going to be talking about why so many of the things that he does that look really random are actually really, really smart and calculated. And if you guys like this type of breakdown, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. It helps me out so much. And, you know, guys, I took two weeks off on vacation and I came back and I was sick with COVID for a week. So my algorithm is completely destroyed. So if you hit the like button, it'll really help me get back and get people seeing my videos again, because right now I'm pretty sure I'm getting buried. But with that, let's get into the next clip here. I think this will show you a little bit more of what Jobin's got going on upstairs, okay? So here he gets anti-aired by a jab, and then Honda cancels the jab in the headbutt, because that's what Honda's generally going to do is cancel it. Jobin, recognizing that he's going to air reset here, actually does the DP. This is not a random DP. This is a smart DP. In my opinion, I feel like he knew. So that was a really good decision. Into super, of course. Killer stuff. And here, look at him. My man hitting the one frame links. You guys see that? Solar plexus strike into down medium punch, one frame link. You can see he does plink it uh, using the trick in Street Fighter 4 that lets you turn a one frame link into a two frame link. And then he gets the two frame link from crouch medium punch into crouch fierce. Killer execution. And then let's just do overheads, overheads, overheads. And then the DP stuns. And here's the dizzy combo. Of course, he goes for the one frame link again with the FADC. Guys, his execution. He's fighting the number two Goken on the ladder, man. Back in the day, these, these rankings, people paid attention to these. We really cared. So obviously, the execution was really good in this clip with all the one frame links. I remember people speculated back in the day, does Jobin use macros? Is this man cheating to hit these links so consistently? Uh, he's definitely not. There is live tournament footage of Jobin in places like Evo Japan, where he did pretty well one year. So you can see Jobin play offline and still land some really good execution. And then here's the other trademark. I would say the two trademark aspects of his gameplay here are the many, many dragon punches and then the repeated overhead, the collarbone breaker. So the collarbone breaker going for it over and over, it's a bit trolly, but it makes sense in a lot of ways because one, you'll notice he usually does it when the opponent is very close to stun. This move, you know, it doesn't give you a combo or anything if it lands, it's just a small bit of damage. But if it puts the opponent over the edge of being stunned, uh, then it's definitely worth going for. And another thing you'll notice is here, you know, the opponent, he's, he, he's not stand blocking. He's basically doing everything but stand blocking. Uh, because stand blocking is pretty scary in this game, you're going to get opened up by a low Ryu with all this meter, low forward into fireball, FADC, or into EX fireball, into a juggle. Uh, it's going to do a ton of damage. So he really doesn't want to block standing, so instead he just jumps out to escape the situation. And there's a, a low enough number of frames on this move that he can recover an anti-air DP. So very smart stuff there, again from Joe, but not a random DP. A reaction DP to the jump gets the dizzy. So again, I think that's a pretty impressive clip. Pretty solid gameplay, even if the the, the overheads is a little bit trollish. All right, next up here, 
This is against Guile. So this is another one. I feel like this looks random when you see it, right? The jump in directly into the EX Tatsu. But let's examine why I think that this is a smart move. So you can see Guile focus absorbs the jump in and then back dashes. And then Jovan did the insane move of EX Tatsu. Most people would not think to do this move here, but it actually does make sense to me in retrospect watching this because focus absorb backdash it, it, it's kind of a tricky situation because backdashes have a pretty good amount of invincibility in the street fighter 4 series so let's say he went for something like really normal like jump in roundhouse crouch roundhouse you can see i'm able to backdash through it using the invincibility of backdash and it's the same thing if he were to go for like dragon punch here he's probably just gonna backdash get out of the way it's not gonna work but this directly into ex tatsu play you can see it's so active because the move lasts for so long because he's stuck there spinning. Uh, there's really no way to backdash through this. So you are going to get got. So low key, I think that this jump in into EX Tatsu does make sense if you really examine it. And also if you look at the amount of stun it does, 400 stun. And yes, you do take stun when you're focus absorbing something. You do actually eat that stun. So it becomes 410 stun for that. We can see Jobin loves playing for the stun. So I think going for the EX Tatsu there, smart decision. It makes a lot of sense to me. So what does he do after landing this EX Tatsu? Guess what? We're going to jump in with Jab into another EX Tatsu. That's an uncombo. I don't think he expected the Jab to hit. And sure enough, it does hit. And, you know, Ryu gets a juggle off EX Tatsu in the corner in this game. So let's examine this situation and talk about why this is a pretty smart sequence that he goes for. So jump jab, you know, very, very low amount of hit stun and block stun. This is generally going to be a good setup for a grab because the opponent is going to recover quicker than they expect. And they're going to get grabbed. Whereas if, you know, if you go for like a fierce, your grab is generally going to miss if you try to grab that fast because they're still going to be in block stun. So the jump jab into grab allows you to get a very fast tick grab. But of course the opponent knows this. And most people in this game, they're kind of thinking about grab a lot. And they're trying to play around grab by doing what's called crouch tech. So crouch tech is a very powerful mechanic. It's literally what it sounds like. It's crouching and teching a throw. And you can see you don't actually get a throw animation when you do this. You get a kicking animation. So you can see here, I'm able to tech the throw while crouching by utilizing crouch tech. I can just sit back and uh, when I feel like I'm about to get thrown, I press throw. And if he doesn't throw, you know, nothing bad happens. I just get a crouching light kick, which is not a huge deal. You're probably not going to get destroyed for pressing crouching light kick most of the time. So a lot of people will just crouch tech all the time. Whenever they expect any kind of throw, wherever there's any kind of gap in pressure, they're going to crouch tech. And Jovan is extremely good at blowing this up. So we just saw one of the one of the key ways to blow this up here. So here you can see kind of the the standard thing that might happen here. When I block this jump in light punch, I'm going to be like, oh crap, I'm probably getting thrown. Let's crouch tech. But what happens if we do what Jobin did? Instead, we get counter hit by the EX Tatsu. It's airborne. It's going to avoid that crouching light kick and you get the ultra juggle afterwards for massive damage. So you'll notice throughout the video, this is something I'm going to point out a lot. We can see the opponent's inputs so we can see for sure he pressed throw tech right there and uh yeah that's why he got blown up and he's probably gonna lose this whole round by getting juggled into ultra so we're gonna pay attention to these inputs and he is gonna blow up throw tech a lot which is really good because crouch tech everyone's doing it in this game until you get to like the tippy top level of play crouch tech is just ubiquitous people use it all the time because they don't want to get thrown and geobin is going to take advantage of that tendency many many times throughout these clips. All right, let's check out this one. He's fighting Balrog, focus absorb. And instead of just letting the focus go, he charges it all the way to level three. And then does back dash into sweep, which doesn't hit. Okay, I have no explanation for this one. This one was just, this one was just an error. I don't know why he wouldn't do a combo there. It's fine, he didn't react. But there we got the classic DP into DP. <laughs> classic Joven stuff right there. Let's go, ooh, we're, we're spamming jab. You might, uh, this, this is why a lot of people in the comments, let me, let me show some of the YouTube comments up here. A lot of people say Jobin is so spammy. One guy says this guy's all about mashing to entertain, nothing more. This guy shows perfectly why this game sucks. You know, I tell people that a lot of people hated SF4 back in the day. It was, it was a pretty divisive game and people don't believe me. People are like SF4 is one of the most beloved fighting games. Nobody hated this game. 
A lot of people hated it. Look, super boring for. So he's a DP spammer. This guy gets it. I don't like his random style. Okay, his style is a little bit random, but I like it personally. So yeah, a lot of people were like, this guy is just a masher. That's what we truly believe. But there's a method to the madness. There's a method to the mashness. If you wonder why is he mashing jab, he shows right there because it's gonna it's gonna cut off the air jaguar kick, which is you know Adon's approach so often in these matchups. And by the way, that is another incredible crouch tech blow up. Check this out. He puts a slight delay on the crouching medium punch, and sure enough, that's a crouch tech right there. Blows it up with the massive counter hit damage combo. Huge amount of stun. Cross up Tatsu. That's another Jobin classic. Is just jumping in with Tatsu. <laughs> It works so much. Look, I, I think that jump in Tatsu against Dalsim is actually really, really good. You can see, unlike a character like Ryu or Sagat, Dalsim does not have like an uppercut that's just going to go through and hit everything. He has to rely on his normals. And you can see using the jump in Tatsu, it can alter your air timing and your trajectory to make those normals harder to use. So I think that that makes a lot of sense for the matchup. And he even gets the DP after. I didn't know that was possible. I straight up didn't know that you could do that. That's crazy. Oh, he goes for the overhead, gets thrown out of it. How rare. But it's fine. Just hold up forward on wake up. Dawson misspaced the yoga flame. Let's get some of those difficult links in there. <laughs> I can't. What is this? He does dash up EX fireball. It trades with wake up buttons. And he actually combos into Tatsu. No one is doing this. No one is confirming off that trade EX fireball. And it stuns too. Oh my god, that is bizarre. And there, I like this, the jump medium punch into EX Tatsu. Can't believe that actually reached. He was so far. And this is another crazy throw tech blow up. Look, he understands so well when the opponent is going to try to tech a throw. It seems like he learns really, really fast. You can see he just leaves that micro pause in there. Let's the opponent throw tech and gets the major counter hit combo. So sick. All right, we're, we're back. <laughs> we're back into spamming overheads. And then we have jump roundhouse whiff into DP. I'm going to defend this. I'm going to defend this. I think this is definitely like a standout. Like, oh, that was a super, super random DP. He whiffed the jump roundhouse into DP. We actually saw in the very first clip that I showed. If you guys remember back here, it seems like early jumping roundhouse is a common tactic that he likes to use to catch the opponent air to air. But then what's the, what's the follow up? If they don't jump and you're just awkwardly stuck here doing this early jump roundhouse, what do you do? And the answer is clearly, you know, you whiff the jump roundhouse, you just land in DP. And guess what Frente pressed? He pressed throw, standing throw. So this is why I'm going to defend this is because when you whiff a jump in, 99% of players will do a throw. Pay attention to this the next time you play a Street Fighter game. This is just like a law of nature. If you like accidentally like go for a cross up, but you whiff, Everybody throws. Every single player, with with a few exceptions, I'm sure, but 99.9% .9 of players you fight, if you whiff a jump in, they immediately press throw. It's just instinct. So most of the time when a situation like this happens, you know, the jump in whiffs, what's going to happen? You're just going to throw tech. That's usually the result of these types of situations is you just tech. But this is actually a habit that can be exploited. You know, if I try to throw tech here, I get blown up by the flip kick because it's an airborne move. So it's going to beat the throw and, you know, Chun can get a whole huge combo here. A lot of characters can do tricks like this to exploit this extremely common, you know, instinct that everyone has to throw tech when it jump in whiffs. But, you know, Jovan, how's he going to exploit this? Yeah, he's just going to DP, of course, because that's what he does in every situation. But, of course, Puerte did press throw here because everybody throws. Everybody throws in this situation, so it's just going to hit clean with the fierce DP. And there, again, throw tech gets blown up by EX Tatsu. I'm telling you, people have tendencies. They have habits. And clearly this Fuerte, he's pressing throw tech and he gets completely destroyed for it. Of course, he's close to stun, so we're gonna go for the repeated overheads. And I'm sure he won the round off that, but there's a nice medium punch into medium punch link. EX Tatsu into ultra mid screen. You don't see this that often. For sure in the corner, this is a very common strategy that everyone's going to all the time because you have a lot more time to actually get the ultra. You know, you can be a little bit further back, but you know, mid screen, you can't, you can't do this off of like any buttons or anything. You're just way too far. And in fact, normally this isn't even going to work point blank mid screen. You can see it, it actually doesn't work. 
Even if you're even if you're you're absolutely right up on them, this is not gonna work mid-screen. The only way it works is on counter hit. So we can get counter hit point blank EX fireball. And that's gonna go into ultra. Can you believe that? Not just the fact that that works, but that Jovan actually comboed off it. Of course, what was the opponent going for? Crouch tech. You guys better believe it. This is yet another crouch tech blow up. He hit confirms off the counter hit. He looks for the counter hit text because that's the only way that this ultra is gonna land and he actually lands it. Crazy. All right, he's getting jumped in on by Yun. I don't know how that crouch fierce into DP. I have no explanation for that one, guys. Okay, gets jumped over with the dive kick, but just let those DPs rip, man. Let the chopper sing. Baits out a DP. Gets the stun, whiffing. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to defend this one. He whiffs two DPs to build extra meter. Wants to have two meters for next round. But uh, he takes a little too much time. The opponent shakes out of the stun, blocks the DP. Gets the throw, but I mean, come on. You're not going to lose this round. Just DP again. And there, now he did he did basically get those two meters that he's looking for. So the long game played out. But that one obviously was a mistake, okay? I'm not going to defend that one. What's next? Oh, dash up DP. Once again, the corner fireball to blow up. Surely that was another crouch tech, right? No, I don't know what that was. The opponent's just mashing. I guess that's crouch tech? Why, why is he pressing like five buttons at once? Regardless, gets blown up by EX Fireball. It gets blown up by DP after DP. Dash up after the blocked focus. Tatsu is going to blow up the back dash. Going for overheads, of course. The opponent must be close to stun, right? Oh my god, baits the uppercut kicks. This is going too fast to keep track of now. Multiple overheads into cross up. Once again, the delayed crouching medium punch blows up crouch tech. We've seen him go for this so many times. Gets air reset out with crouching light kick and just lets the DP rip. That's fine. And then just a mid-screen DP to blow up the slide. I don't know if that was a reaction, but th this right here is definitely one of the most one of the most crazy things in this whole video. I feel like if you don't play this game, maybe you don't understand why this combo is so absurd. He trades focus with Tatsu. Focus puts the opponent in juggle state, and he juggles into sweep. No one is doing this combo. I swear, I've never seen this before in my life outside of this video. But he knew. I guess he knew. I guess he's seen that before. I don't know. Gets the juggle. Okay, empty jump once again. I, I assume that this is going to be a throw tech blow up. Let's see. E empty jump. Makoto's just pressing buttons here. I don't know. Jump fierce. Uh, gets blown up by the DP. Okay, a little late on the crouch tech there. Oh, same side, awkward cross up. We're just letting Tatsu's rip. So I, you know, the opponent was pretty much the the opponent was the true masher here. Look at how many buttons this guy is pressing. Of course, you're gonna get dizzied if you're pressing on wake up like that. DP on reaction to the quesadilla bomb or the tor torti. What move is that? Tostada press, that's what it is. The Tostada press, that was a good reaction with the uppercut. But this time we're just letting the uppercut rip. I actually will defend this a little bit. You know, if you whiff an uppercut like this, everyone's gonna try to take their turn. Even if they don't think they're gonna have time to get a punish, they're gonna try to take their turn here. So of course you can stop them from taking your turn with Dragon Punch. It's invincible, guys, just do it. Oh my God, okay, we got Oiled Up Hakan, strongest character in the game, am I right? But even Hakan with oil is not stronger than Ryu. We're going full helicopter strats here. Oh my god. Hard to anti air. Hard to anti air. And then there's the empty jump low into the big combo. Empty jump throw. Amazed that wasn't a dizzy there. Also amazed he didn't go for overhead. He goes for two throws in a row and finally kills with the trade DP. Uh, I'm not going to go beat by beat through that round, but it, it was a pretty good round. I mean... Spamming the air Tatsus to get the opponent used to the fact that you're going to be going for jump-ins and then going empty jump low, empty jump throw. Good mix up there. And, uh, you know, took the round off it. All right, here against Cody. This Cody spamming rocks. How, how are we going to beat the rocks? We'll beat it just by throwing out Ultra here. Cody doesn't have time to put the rock away. He gets blown up. All right, guys, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think Joven's going to do? Opponent only has a little bit left. He's point blank. Yeah, that's right. He's dragon punching. But this is actually a bit of an option select here. You can see he doesn't quite have two meters. So 
because the opponent blocked, it gave him the two meters necessary to do the FADC. Okay, it's not really an option select, but the, the DP did give him the meter that he needed to FADC, but doesn't even dash cancel the focus. Instead, just dashes up and does another DP. Let's go. Oh my god, we're both in helicopter mode here. Oh, the DP gets baited. Misses the punish, though. Instead gets tick thrown. Cross up Tatsu, hits on the back, tries to jump away from the focus instead. Here's a combo for your troubles, but it dizzied mid combo, so the super whips. <laughs> it's fine. We're fighting the number eight Abel in the world right now. Let's go. Counter poking the forward medium kick, one of Abel's standard go to bread and butter pokes. Counter poking it with EX Fireball, getting close to the corner. Jump in medium punch is going to hit air to air. So you get the juggle, whiffing a focus attack, that's fine. We're spam, we, we see here again, we, we spam the overheads and the opponent, rather than trying to correctly stand block the overhead, they'd rather just jump just to get avoid the blocking situation altogether. And Jobin knows, he has time to do the DP. Once again, the knowledge is there. We've seen these situations come up. Very nice, we're spamming overheads, gotta be stunned soon, right? Oh, actually stand blocks the overhead and then gets hit by low forward. Oh my god. Once again, blowing up crouch tech with the delayed buttons. We're seeing the same things happen over and over again. You might you might think, well, oh, is he going to go for Tatsu here? No, goes for throw. Actually does the tick throw option off the jump jab. <laughs> Just to prove that the threat is really there. Oh my god. And here's another one. Uses EX fireball again to blow up the crouch tech. Gets the DP afterwards. Guys, I'm in disbelief. Okay, we're blowing up Crouch Tech with EX Tatsu this time. Close to the corner, but not close enough to get the combo. But now you should be Ultra here. Let's go. Guys, I'm sorry. We're, we're just kind of zooming through at this point. I'm not pausing and analyzing because we're just seeing a lot of the same tactics. So I feel like when you watch this highlight video the first time, it just feels like he's just doing random stuff over and over and over. Like, oh, it's just DP, DP, overhead, overhead, Tatsu. But when once you start to see the patterns... You can see the tactics that he likes going for. And I, you know, I will say, even though I do think Jobin is a, a good player, he's not the best player in the world, but he's a good player. Um, but he is definitely playing with best of one tactics. Ranked in this game is best of one game. There's no rematch, no two out of three. It's best of one. So these are best of one tactics. So that's kind of why you see him doing the same strategies over and over is because a lot of these opponents, it's going to be their first time seeing it. They won't know to expect it. Let, let's keep zooming through. All right, Akuma's trying to play footsies, but if the opponent's trying to play footsies, you can just jump. If they're, if they're throwing out pokes, they're not going to be ready to anti here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. We got the cross up Tatsu into super Ryu super so legendary in this game. I, I think, he, did he think that he was gonna have meter there? <laughs> I don't know, you just did super. How are you gonna have meter? Because this looks like he's setting up delay. Oh wait, no, but he didn't press two buttons. We can see, he only pressed one button. So I guess the delayed fireball is gonna blow up the crouch tech there. And then just DP works for some reason. <laughs> This one's a little hard for me to analyze. Uh, maybe it's the fact that non-EX fireball close range is generally minus, so the opponent tries to take a turn there. Seems like Akuma tried to take a turn with Crouching Light Kick. Uh, and so DP stops the opponent from taking their turn. That's the best guess that I can have for this strategy of doing fireball into DP. But whatever, it worked. It worked, so... Uh, smarter than me. Uh, a little too far to throw there, but, you know, just let another DP rip. That's fine. <laughs> All right, half-screen DP is going to be Adon's pokes. Punishing the whiff Jaguar Tooth. Let's just DP again, man. Fireball. And you can see that jump in Tatsu. It's tricky, man. It beat out EX DP right there. Jump in Tatsu. Okay, DP FADC. It was plus back then. Actually, the opponent not biting. This is like the first time we've seen this whole time. The opponent delayed the crouch tech, so they didn't get blown up by the delayed crouching medium punch. They got hit by the second medium punch, but no time to hit confirm off just one. Then we got uh, charge focus attack, dash up, delay Tatsu to try to blow up the crouch tech, but the Adon player does not take the bait. Actually, really good defense by the Adon player. Seems like the only player so far to not just fall for these easy traps uh, by pressing throw. Wow, the jumping actually connects there. Massive damage. 
Definitely gonna be looking for stun this round. Oh my god, Tatsu into DP. We're not gonna see what happens after, but holy cow. All right, no punish on the DP, just DP trades into super, of course. The legendary Ryu super. We're just linking jab into fierce like it's no biggie twice in a row. There's the dizzy, whiffing a fireball to build meter because for some reason this is this is best four best three out of five rounds. No one plays like that, but it's fine. You gotta have all the meter you can get. So you better you better whiff the fireball there for a little extra. All right, here against Sagat. Oh, just DP after the Tiger Knee. Yeah, that's a common Sagat strategy is that you're plus after the well-spaced Tiger Knee. But, you know, DP doesn't care if you're plus or not. Uh, I was going to say, it's amazing that he didn't get DP'd going for that neutral jump there. So scary to neutral jump on defense like that against a player like Jobin, who is constantly doing DP. Uh, but he actually gets away with it. it. It looked like... Was that a DP attempt? I don't know what that was there. Pressing pressing the buttons like that. It's a, a late throw tech option select. I don't I don't know what that is. But anyway, blocks the, the jump in and of course just goes for DP again. It's fine. Uh, not a lot of recovery frames here, so you're gonna have time to get the DP out. Of course. Oh, just walks back baiting DP FADC there. Just DP and jumpins all day now. Half screen DP. And you were even too far to FADC that with two meters. There's no way to make that safe from that far away. So that was, that's just a hard read, man. I got no defense for that one. He just knew. And then, of course, the empty jump low. Did that dizzy? Let me see. Oh, my God. The half screen DP, empty jump low. And it did dizzy. There were stars over Sagat. Let's go. All right, Seth. One of the most dangerous characters in this game, but very low dizzy and HP. So let's see. Never mind. We're just going to do half, half screen. Th this one's not that bad. I don't really get why this is in the compilation. He whip punishes the crouching medium kick with EX fireball. Seems good to me. Oh, wow. He actually beats out the wake up headbutt. Expecting once again a crouch tech here. Balrog goes for a headbutt. They just phase through each other. Balrog gets hit. That's pretty funny. Let's go for a couple overheads. The classic. Jump in fierce. Let's see huge damage. Three crouching medium punches. <laughs> Three crouching medium punch. This combo is so crazy. This is another one where like, I feel like if you didn't play the game, you don't understand why this is so ridiculous. Hold on. So you can see there's, there's no way. There's no way to get three crouching medium punches here. Even in the corner, there's simply no way. You just don't have the space. But you can see crouchers are going to be a little bit wider. But you can see the jump in is going to leave you like right on top of the opponent. But even with that, man, I'm really, I really cannot hit this comp. What is the secret? It's got to be something with like where the jump in hits them here I, I was frame by framing to try to see if there's a micro walk or something i think it's just he hits him like so deep like he is phasing into akuma's body here let's see if i can get it oh my god i i just did it was a cross up though it wasn't it wasn't legit it hit cross up okay there we go there we go i guess akuma is a little bit wider than chun li okay oh my god how are you doing that in an actual match how are you recognizing that you hit deep enough and you crouch confirm you have to confirm the opponent's crouching because it doesn't it, i i assume that this doesn't work on standing akuma yeah see look it just doesn't work so that is actually nuts that anyone would do that in a real match that is actually insane but okay there's the the triple medium punch into the knockdown Let's see what we got against Kami here. Focus dash out of the corner into the DP. Of course, jump in into the corner into Raw Ultra. Surely this gets blocked. Just kidding. This gets counter ultra, but Ryu Ultra wins. Ryu takes one hit and then Kami gets hit. Oh my God. She was too close. If she was half screen, I think she would have gone through. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's going to be too much more gameplay to discuss here, but I just wanted to shout out once again, Lang Hu BBB for putting this video together like 10 years ago. Uh, it still holds up, man. It still holds up. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to link this down in the description, so make sure you guys check that out. And and let me know what you think. Did I change your mind at all? If you were someone that thought, okay, this guy's just random, did, did I change your mind and, and, you know, maybe show you some of the reasons why there might be a little bit of calculation behind the randomness? It's controlled randomness. It's, it's like a tornado. It's controlled randomness. I don't know. 
Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear it down in the comments. And uh, yeah, with that, that's going to be it for the video. Once again, if you could hit the like button and subscribe button, it would really, really help me out. If you like this type of analysis video, I would love to do more of them. So let me know if there's other players or matches you would love to see me analyze. But with that, I'll see you guys later. Hope you all have a good one. Bye, everybody.